And today I will be talking about intents of interacting dark universe on cosmological perturbation. This talk is based on these two uh, papers which are on archive and this work has recently been published in Physics of the Dark Universe. This is the cosmic pie chart and we know what this picture depicts. Around 70% of the total energy budget of the universe is composed of dark energy, which is an exotic component and is considered to be responsible for the present accelerated expansion of the universe. And the rest 30% it comprises of the dark matter and the normal visible baryonic matter. So as I mentioned that uh, we know our universe is expanding with an acceleration. And to explain this acceleration, a number of candidates have been proposed. Out of all these candidates, lambda CDM model happens to be the simplest and most liked candidate because of its simple nature. But the lambda CDM model, it suffers from the well-known cosmological constant problem, coincidence problem, etc. And this tells us that one has to look beyond the lambda CDM model. So what are the alternatives to lambda CDM model? There are mainly two major alternatives. One is to consider the dynamical dark energy models in which the matter sector of the Einstein's equation is modified. And the other option is to um, modify the uh, gravity sector or the geometry sector. These are known as modified gravity models where the Einstein Hilbert action is modified in order to explain this acceleration. So in this talk, I'll be mainly talking about this dynamical dark energy model or specifically the quintessence. sensor. So if we consider a specially flat, homogeneous, and isotropic friedman robertson walker universe, the Einstein field equations are given by this form. The curly H represents the conformal Hubble parameter. I must uh, mention here that these equations are Friedman equations we have represented in terms of in terms of conformal time tau, which is related to the cosmic time t in this way. And this factor A squared appears because we have represented this in conformal time frame. This rho A and P A, they basically represent the energy density of the different components of the universe and the corresponding pressure component for different constituent components of the universe. So if we consider that our universe comprises of the dark energy and dark matter candidates or whole dark matter is the normal baryonic matter as well as the dark matter together we will call it as cold dark matter. So then this uh, rho A this will be basically there will be two factors rho C for corresponding to cold dark matter and rho dark energy corresponding to the dark energy candidate. So if this to, for these two components, the corresponding conservation equations will be given by these two equations, where W dark energy, it corresponds to the equation of state parameter for the dark energy candidate. And since this, if these two candidates, rho C and rho dark energy, are considered to be non-interacting, then the right-hand side of this conservation equations will be zero, which will indicate that they are conserved by itself. But if we consider that this rho C and rho dark energy, the two dark components interact among themselves, what will be the scenario? So obviously, natural question may arise, why do we need this dark energy dark matter interaction? First of all, the interaction between a dark energy and dark matter candidate will provide a more general scenario. As nothing is known about these components, an interaction among them may provide a more more, more better and general result. Also, this interaction between the two dark components can somehow elevate the Hubble, uh, sorry, the cosmological constant coincidence problem. Because the cosmological coincidence problem basically refers to the why the dark energy common dark energy component becomes dominant very recently. This is known as cosmological coincidence problem. So an interaction between these two candidates can provide us answer to this cosmological coincidence problem. So now the conservation equations will get modified and instead of zero on the right hand side, now we'll have a source term sitting over here. So this source term Q is actually uh, uh, is, it, it determines the strength or the flow of interaction. 
So usually this form of PQ is chosen phenomenologically and the phenomenological choices are either it is considered to be proportional to H times rho C or H times rho dark energy or combination of the reason for these choices are, first of all, these choices make these equations very simple and easy to handle, and also they're dimensionally correct. But uh, it would have been better if one could obtain a form of interaction Q, which directly follows from the action principle. People have tried that, but it has been shown that if we, if if one obtains the form of interaction directly from the Lagrangian, then the form of Q that is obtained and to get the correct amount of acceleration, one has to fine tune this parameter Q a lot. And this is a drawback. So usually the form of interaction is chosen phenomenologically as I mentioned. So here also for this uh, interacting model of dark energy and dark matter, we consider the form of Q as in this form, this is a confident form of Q. So we consider it to be proportional to H times rho dark energy, and beta represents the strength of interaction. U mu zero is the covariant velocity constant. And if we consider a homogeneous and isotropic background, this interaction term or the source term can be written in this simple form, where this AQ is basically proportional to H times rho dark energy. Again, the factor A appears because we are expressing everything in terms of conformal, conformal time frame. Now, regarding this beta, if this beta is positive, this will indicate that the, if this beta is positive, this will indicate that the Q is positive, and that means that the rho dark energy, this will grow with time, and rho C, the dark matter component, will basically, its energy density will decrease with time which indicates that the flow of energy is from dark matter to the dark energy. Whereas if we obtain a negative value of beta, this will indicate that the flow is in the opposite direction. That means the energy or the matter is flowing from dark matter to the, sorry, the dark energy to the dark matter. And the implications, the cosmological implications of these different forms of this Q can be found in this beautiful review by B1. I'm not going into details. So with this chosen form of Q, let us try to explain a toy model for the dark energy model. So we, for this toy model, we choose a unjust for this uh, energy density for the dark energy component. This is a phenomenologically chosen unjust, where lambda and gamma are the model parameters. And this form of low dark energy is easily integrable and one obtains the form of low dark energy in this way. Now, if we solve this, if we use this low dark energy and solve the Einstein field equations, considering the energy density for the dark energy candidate as a scalar field, then the potential for the scalar field one obtains in this form. And as you can see, alpha 1 and alpha 2 are basically dependent on this model parameters lambda gamma. Now, this form of potential, one can say this is a double exponential potential. Because double exponential potentials are very well studied in the context of inflation. So, with the same form of potential, one can study early acceleration as well as the late term. But one beautiful feature of this, or one important feature of this uh, toy model is that, if we, I will show it also later on, that if for smaller values of A, or the scale factor, that means at earlier times, this model will behave more or less like a lambda CDA model, but at later time, the deviation from the lambda CDA model will become prominent. So for this particular unjust or for this particular time of trial model, one can obtain the form of the equation of state parameter for the dark energy candidate, and this comes out in, in this form, where beta represents the strength of interaction. And as if you plot this, you can see, as I mentioned earlier, that for smaller values of A, the value of W dark energy is very close to 1. That means it mimics a lambda city model. But as we go to later time, here we have plotted along x axis, we have plotted A with a scale by A0. So A is equal to 1 represents present time. As we go to later time, this A, it, uh, at a later time, the W dark energy basically deviates from the lambda city model. Even for beta is equal to zero, this 
uh, effect is prominent. And for higher strength of interaction, the deviation from lambda CTM model will be higher. So this is one important uh, important uh, aspect of this uh, choice that for smaller values of A, it will behave like a lambda CTM model. And uh, for higher values of A, it will deviate from the lambda CTM model, unlike most of the dark energy parameterizations that we appear in literature. So we have considered the background as well as perturbative analysis for this model. We have considered three different cases for three different choices of this beta, lambda, and gamma. So we have chosen beta to be 0.1, then we have decreased the strength of interaction. Lambda and gamma, we have actually used Hubble data and supernova data, and we have performed the chi-square analysis to constrain these model parameters, and the best fit values come out to be very close to three and five. And for case two and case three, we have chosen the values of lambda and gamma somehow arbitrarily to check what happens. So the figure on the left-hand side, it represents the evolution of Q for these three cases, as well as we have inputted the lambda CDM model. And on the and the figure on the right-hand side, it shows the uh, equation of the equation of state parameter or the density parameters for Now, as you can see that uh, at earlier time, for smaller values of A, this was just mimicking lambda CDM model. And with higher values of A at present, it, the deviation from lambda CDM model becomes more and more, as we have explained in the previous graph. And here it shows that the dark energy dominates at late, much later. We have also carried on the perturbation equations because we want to check what, if, if we consider an interacting model, what imprint does it leave on the effect, uh, on, the, on the matter power spectrum? So this is the part of uh, FLRW metric. And if we uh, consider a synchronized sketch and arrive at the perturbation equations, we obtain this four coupled differential equations. These two equations are for the, um, for the cold dark matter candidate, and these two equations are for the dark matter energy candidate. Delta represents the density contrast for the corresponding component, either cold dark matter or the dark energy. So to obtain the evolution of perturbation, one has to solve these four coupled differential equations. So for that, we have used the publicly available CAMP code, and we have modified it suitably. These are the set of initial conditions which we have chosen for this um, density contrast for the cold dark matter and density contrast for the dark energy candidate. So the results, what we obtain is here on the, on the left panel, we have plotted the density contrast for the matter field. And on the right panel, we have plotted the density contrast for the dark energy candidate. Here for comparison purpose, we have, we have divided it, we have compared it with the uh, lambda CDM model. And what we find is that for higher values of A at later time, the initially there was uh, not much difference. It was mimicking the lambda CD model. But with the strength of interaction, as the strength of interaction increases, it actually deviates from the lambda CDM model. In fact, there is a suppression in the so if we if we consider the fractional matter density contrast, we find that the as compared to lambda CDM model. If we have this interacting model and with the increase in the strength of interaction, the, the, the fractional matter density will get basically suppressed. The matter density will get suppressed with the increase in the strength of interaction. For dark energy candidate, what we find is that for, for high values of interaction, there was initially some fluctuation in the dark energy candidate and then it settles. Whereas for smaller values of uh, the interaction, strength of interaction, there was not much uh, not much fluctuations in the dark energy. We have also plotted the temperature and the matter power spectrum. And we find that for with the increase in the strength of interaction, we can see that the matter power spectrum gets suppressed. Whereas if we increase the also, if we increase the strength of interaction, what we find is that there are, there are prominent features or prominent imprints that will be leave, left on the matter power spectrum. And same thing is for the uh, temperature power spectrum as well. 
So we have obtained the numerical, we have performed the numerical investigation and we have tried to obtain the observational constants. So for that, we have used the Planck 2018 data, the BO data, and the Pantheon data. And these are the set of priors which we have used for this uh, cosmology analysis. You can see we have kept a large set of priors for this unknown of the model parameters, lambda, gamma, and so this is the uh, posterior distribution for these different cosmological parameters. The value of Hubble parameter, it comes out to be around 67. But I would like to draw your attention towards these unknown parameters of the model parameters. For beta, you can see the value of beta, the best value of beta comes out to be around the positive, somewhat in the, on the positive side. For lambda, we do not get a very tight constraint on the value of this. And for gamma, we get a lower bound, but there is no upper bound. So if we summarize the result, which I have shown in the previous plot. So for H0, when we are using the joint analysis for Planck, DO, and Pentium, the value of H0 comes out to be around 67.66. So it could not solve the Hubble tension problem. But the one one advantage is that the model parameters beta, lambda, and gamma they are not very tightly constant. You can see that lambda we could not obtain any constraint on the value of lambda. For gamma we have a lower bound, but there is no upper bound, which, which makes parameters almost a free parameter, and so our model is free from the fine tuning problem. Regarding the value of beta, you can see this is the value of beta is always on the positive side. It indicates that the flow of energy is from the dark matter to the dark energy can. So let me conclude. So we have revisited the scalar field dark energy models where we have allowed the two dark sectors to interact among themselves. We find that for a lower rate of interaction, there is not much significant effect on the matter density fluctuation. But if we increase the strength of interaction, there are deceiving imprints. Uh, on the evolution. We have obtained the central value of the coupling parameter beta to be positive. Indicates that the energy flow is from dark matter to dark energy candidate. The parameters, model parameters, lambda and gamma are not very tightly constant. And for all data sets, you can see that the beta is equal to zero. It lies outside the one sigma region. That means data indicates a interaction uh, between the dark energy and the dark matter candidate. So with that, I will stop. Thank you.